Watching the Highlight Zone with Wayne 15 Sports Director Glenn Marini. Local sports coverage you can count on. Uh, let's go, let's go. It's time to get in the zone. The Friday night lights are on. We got Justin Glenn as your host. Down to the whistle so close. Here come the highlights to show. We're preparing to run the ball hard, preparing to block hard, and uh, our special teams is preparing to dominate. This game has always been played hard with Dwanger and Snyder. I mean, not much can be said. It's just wh whichever team wants to win more is going to win. We love the rivalry. We love the excitement that comes with the games. There's no greater Friday night than when you, I think, when you play Snyder, and, and I, maybe they say the same thing when you play Dwanger. Friday nights in the zone. Friday nights in the zone. Friday nights in the zone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. When it comes to the history of football here in the Summit City, you'd be hard pressed to do better than this combo. We're talking a classic clash of perennial powers headlining week eight. Josh Ann joining us with your Highlight Zone Game of the Week. Josh. Well, Glenn, when the Indiana Football Coaches Association poll came out this week, there was a new number one in 5A at 6 and 1. Snyder moving up to the top spot. And at 5 and 2, the Saints not too far behind as Bishop Dwenger ranked eighth. And it sets up a top 10 showdown in one of the state's biggest classes. Snatter and Dwanger, it's your highlight zone game of the week. These two could very well meet in the sectional play later this month as the sectional draw set to come out this Sunday. So tonight could be a playoff preview. Well, in the first quarter, Snatter around midfield, but Luke Hoppert with an errant pass getting snatched by Dwanger's Ryan Groves and remains scoreless after one quarter to the second. Snyder going with the crown and pound and Langston level. Leveling this Dwanger defense. He's able to go down deep in Dwanger territory, but fear not because a few plays later, it's level twirling his way past the goal line and it's a 7-0 Snyder lead at the half. After the break, Dwanger trying to knock in a field goal, but this one blocked by the Panthers and there to scoop it up is Keydro Billingsley. He takes this 71 yards to the end zone in Snyder, doubling their lead 14 to nothing. And at this point in the fourth quarter, Dwanger just desperate for any sort of points. Fourth down, deep in their own territory. A big sack made by Lucas Wolbacher to force the turnover on downs. And a few plays later, it sets up Uriah Buchanan. Looking like he shot out of a cannon for this 10 yard touchdown. And Snyder going on to shut up Bishop Dwanger 28 to nothing. Tonight, tonight was a good win. We played well on defense. We played our good key assignments, and we played well. Oh, it was good. It's excited to uh, shut the wanger down after after talking about how good we always play. It's been great. Uh, we were able to execute by executing in practice all week, uh, taking no days off, just working on the game plan all week was a great way to work through the game today. We were physical, and um, you know, did that, and you know, we had some some nicks and stuff in the first half, kind of limited some of the things we could do. So. Um, proud of our guys, resilient, and, you know, got to keep getting better. We'll play this team again. Next up, Dwanger wrapping up the regular season against Northrop, while Snyder hosts Moors next Friday. Len, take it away. All right, thank you. With head-to-head -head wins over Snyder, Dwanger Northside, the uh, Carroll Chargers could clinch the SAC title tonight. They would need a win against Concordia to do that first quarter. Fourth and two in their own territory. They go for it, but, you know, it's... You know, maybe not that hard of a call when you got Braden Steely out of the Wildcat. 16 yard pickup, the diamond. Throwing caution to the wind. It's a first down. Later on the drive, how about this? The hook and ladder. Jimmy Sullivan to Cam Hershberger. Are you kidding me? Nathan starts the recipient of that lateral, and he is in 7 0. Chargers out in front. They were not done. You saw the offense. How about the D? Jorge Valdez stepping in and stepping up. He gets the interception. And is down deep in Concordia territory. It leads to this a little more razzle dazzle. Jimmy Sullivan used to throw in touchdowns. He catches this one from Hershberger. Doug Dynan pulling out all the stops as the Chargers win 51 0 to clinch the SAC title. Intriguing matchup at Wayne Stadium. This one would be a good one. The host generals taking on Homestead. Second quarter of the Spartans, Peyton Slavin to John Delly. That's a touchdown, and it's 7 0, and plenty more offense where that came from. Wayne's Christian Trimble to Harold Mack, and Harold Mack looking like Austin Mack. It's a touchdown for Wayne and the generals back in front, 8 to 7. It was back and forth all night in this one at Wayne Manor. You're going to see Slavin again. He had 401 yards passing, this time to the big guy, 
Grant Leeper. It's a touchdown. Spartans now up 14-8. Wayne's Trimble airing it out. He had 425 yards passing. Just offense all over the place. Keyshawn Tolls on the receiving end, doing a great job to score here. But Homestead would get a late touchdown from Cam Johnson to win this one 61 to 54. Hey, at Spooler Stadium, Northrop hosting Northside Quinton Bowen in his season number one, leading the Bruins. And the Bruins running the football here with efficiency. Jelante Hinton muscling his way in for the touchdown in the second quarter to make it a 28-7 ball game. The Bruins now on the board, starting to get something going. After a Northrop interception, Keon Bates looking for Matt Morgan, and he is down at the four. Very next play, Bates keeps it. Good decision. It's a touchdown for the Bruins. Now a 28-12 game. Uh, Northside simply too many weapons. You're going to see Tay Tay Johnson, the junior, pick up a first down here. And, well, while our cameras were there, Northrop was rolling, but the rest of the time it was all Northside as the Legends win this one, 49-12. A final stop in the SAC. We got the clash on Calhoun as Lures making the short drive north to face their neighbor to the north, the south side Archers. The first quarter action, Charlie Stansky looking and finding Max Robinson. He wrestles it away for a touchdown. That's what the weight room will do for you. 7-0, Lures in the lead. Second quarter now, it's Lures driving, but Adrian Macon steps in and picks one off. Still a 7-0 ball game, south side. Punting special teams, unfortunately, having some issues right here. The fumble recovered by Wes Javens. That's a Lures touchdown, and it's 14-0 Knights. Later, Zamarion Jackson would take the handoff and punch this one in for Coach Lindsey and the Knights as the clash on Calhoun goes to Lures. 42-0 over the Archers. And that is going to do it tonight for the SAC, but coming up, the division titles in the NECC decided tonight. Could Eastside make it four straight conference championships in the small division? And could Angola go unbeaten in the big division for a conference crown? We're going to check in on both the Blazers and the Hornets coming up. In the Northeast States, Columbia City and Norwell both came into the night undefeated in conference play. Could they both stay that way and set up a huge week nine showdown at the courtyard down in Ossian for all the marbles? We'll also head to Adam Central. We'll go to South Adams and even some Blackhawk Christian football. What? Yeah, it's all here next on the Highlight Zone. We're the Blackhawk Christian Braves. For the first time, we're going to see us on TV on the Highlight Zone. Let's get high. It's a door of opportunity. And I don't care about the handle. You bust that door down together. Unbreakable brotherhood. And you go take advantage of this opportunity together. That was head coach Jason Garrett of Bishop Dwenger. You can check out more behind the scenes with Coach Wednesday at 6 in the Highlight Zone 2 Minute Drill. Meanwhile, Columbia City's schedule is backloaded as always. Their final three games of the regular season uh, East Noble, Leo, and Norwell. Eagles taking care of business in Kendallville last Friday, but could they take down an improving Leo team this week and set up a conference championship to showdown with Norwell next Friday? Well, James Getz in the third quarter gets free. 21 yards on the touchdown. He had three total TDs, 113 yards rushing, and made it a 21-7 Columbia City lead. No give up in Leo. The Purple Pride, Tyler Decker, 22 yards to the youngster. Brock shot for a touchdown. That cuts it to 21-13. But, man, Columbia City's got a lot of weapons. This is Justice Gouri helping to grind out the clock. And Columbia City wins 28-13 to stay undefeated in conference play. And they are victorious. I mean, we're, we're on the top of the world right now. It feels great. I mean, I would even have to do much. Getz, and we have, we're fortunate enough to guy, have guys like uh, Shear, Piper, Getz, Gorey, Arns. They can just do it all. Um, just everyone is really high because everyone, every, each game there's someone different. So we have weapons all around. Everyone's very confident all around. You know, I think we're going to see some things that we need to work on. And, you know, this is an opponent that we're going to see uh, uh, probably in sectional too. So, uh, you know, you want to keep some things open and, and ready to go. 
Okay, Columbia City at Norwell next week. Would the Knights go into that game undefeated? Well, Huntington North standing in the way, but Lou Graff says, uh, I'm not going to let anybody stand in my way. The powerful senior takes the handoff and gets a 15-yard gain here for a first down. Still 0-0 in the first, but guess what? Norwell would rush for 429 yards on the game. How about Mr. Graff? Well, he punches this one in for a short touchdown. He had two of those. And there were eight rushing touchdowns on the game for Norwell, so this baby was just getting started. How about John Colbert? He pounds it home for a touchdown. Yeah, Norwell averaged 10.5 yards a carry. They win 56-0, setting up a huge game against Columbia City next Friday. That will be your Highlight Zone game of the week down at the courtyard. John Young Stadium, New Haven, coming off a 28-zip win over Belmont. Uh, the Bulldogs hosting East Noble. That's Xander Brazel with a touchdown. And East Noble up early 7-0. But guess what? New Haven would fire right back, and they would do it with Mylon Graham. Donovan Williams to Graham and watch him cut across the field. Nobody can corral him. This one goes 51 yards to the house. Mylon Graham is a talent, and East Noble had no answer as New Haven wins this one at John Young Stadium. 37-14 Bulldogs over the Knights. In the ACAC, Adam Central could clinch at least a share of the conference title with a win tonight. The Jets hosting Bluffton at the landing strip. Adam Central scoring early, scoring often. That's Ryan Black on the QB keeper in the first quarter to stake the Jets to a seven-zip lead. And later, it's Black. You saw the feet. How about the arm? He would fire this one into Trevor Curry, who was wide open behind the defense. 14-zip Adam Central just using so many of those weapons is Coach Michael Mosher. Bluffton having some issues moving the football here. The fumble would eventually be recovered by Adam Central. And you can't give the Jets that kind of field position because they'll do this. Ryan Black up the middle. Touchdown. Adam Central victorious 56-8 over Bluffton. The Woodland Warriors had won three in a row. Could they make it four straight after a date with South Adams? This one was one heck of a ball game. Second quarter, Nolan Metz. On the uh, reception here, and Metz cuts up field and then cuts back. It's a 54-yard scamper, and Woodland up 18 to 16 in the second quarter. South Adams, they would answer. Hunter Conger coming into your living room and finding space in the end zone for a touchdown. South Adams now on top, 24 to 18. This, a back and forth ball game. You're gonna see Maverick Somerset with a short touchdown run here. He had 24 carries for a buck 17 and three total TDs to lead South Adams over Woodland in a good game. 38, 32 Starfires on top. Monroeville, Southern Wells looking for its first win of the year. Heritage looking for win number five. That'd be their highest win total since 2015. First quarter, no score. Kobe Meyer changes that. What a revelation he's been running the offense for Casey Colkman this season. That's a 10-yard touchdown, 7-0 Pats. Ibrahim Williams from Meyer. From 17 yards out, he hauls in the reception and finds himself in the end zone. 14-0. Heritage looking at good. Now, how about some defense? It's Braden Walter with the pick. And Walter, oh, no, no, no. The highlight's not done yet. It's Walter taking this one all the way back to the house. A pick six for Heritage. Heritage puts up 68 points. The final in this one, 68-20 over the Raiders. In the NECC small division title, yeah, it was on the line here. A win by Eastside. They win it outright. A win by Central Noble. They split it three ways with the Blazers and Busco. Now, first quarter, Dakota Reed on a three-yard touchdown pass right there to make it 7-0 Eastside. Later in the first, my man Dax Holman. Uh, if you thought he was going to be tackled in this highlight, you were wrong. It's a touchdown. 13 zip Eastside. Second quarter action. How about Dax Holman doing what, you know, Dax Holman does. 37 yards on the touchdown run, and Eastside up 21 zip. Later, you'll see Carson Jacobs, who's done such a nice job at the quarterback position for Todd Mason and company this season. He would go in for the touchdown to make it 28 zip, and the Blazers win their fourth straight conference title, 35 to nothing over the Cougars. And ECC Big Division, Angola and Garrett, a win by the Hornets, and they clinch the Big Division title outright. 
Garrett's defense, though, uh, on fourth and goal with a stop right there, and Garrett led eight to zip. But Garrett's got the football in a precarious position, and it would end in a safety. Angola linebacker Micah Story doing the work there, and now we've got an eight to two ball game. Angola quarterback Tyler Call. He's been answering the call all season long. Call rushes this one in after Angola had added a field goal. Now they get that touchdown. It's a 12 to 8 Angola lead. Garrett, though, no give up in the fight in Depews. You'll see Calder Hefty looking and finding Parker Skelly for a beautiful touchdown. Garrett took the lead there, but it's Angola winning 33 22 as the Hornets win the NECC Big Division title for the first time since 2018. In the NLC, Wawasee looking for its second win of the season. The Warriors on the road at undefeated Northwood, and Northwood is undefeated for a reason, folks. They can play some football up in Napanee. First quarter action, it's Wes Yoder. He's gone. 59 yards on the scamper, 7-0. Northwood in the lead. A little bit later, Owen Rader to who else but Wes Yoder. 25-yard touchdown. And Wabasee falls 57 to nothing as Northwood clinches the NLC title. Last stop of the night, Blackhawk Christian football. Hey, making its highlight zone debut. The Braves playing their first season of eight-man football. And off to a pretty good start. They were four and two coming in. They play most of their game on games on Saturdays, but this one, a Friday night showdown with Parkview Christian Academy out of Illinois. And well, it's gonna be a long drive back for Parkview Christian Academy. Courtesy of Gage Bennett. That's an 80 yard touchdown run early on to make it seven zip Blackhawk. And yeah, there would be plenty to cheer about at Blackhawk. They played this on the soccer field over there. John Overholt to Aiden Muldoon, and he is gone. It's another touchdown. The Braves, man, off to a great start this season 14 0, and then it's Gage Bennett with another touchdown run as Blackhawk wins it. 55-22. Stay tuned. Your Peter Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night is coming up next. It's week eight. The Carroll Chargers are great. Let's send this show out right. Here's your Gem of the Night. Last week, it was a one-handed catch taking center stage as Wayne's Deontay Williams with one of the best catches you're ever going to see on the highlight zone. The Generals receiver taking a last week's top honor in the highlight zone with that touchdown reception against Concordia. What does week eight hold, you may be asking? Well, here is your highlight zone gem of the night brought to you by Frank, Peter Franklin Jewelers, as always. And this one, you know, isn't just one catch. Really, it's like two and one. A hook and ladder? Are you kidding me? In the first quarter? Doug Dynan pulling out all the stops. That was Jimmy Sullivan. Old Jimmy football slinging it out to Cam Hirschberger. And Hirschberger pitching it to his good buddy Nathan Starks. That is a thing of beauty as Carroll wins and clinches the SAC title. That's your Pete Franklin Jewelers Gem of the Night. Hey, next week, what does it look like? Well, I can tell you, your game of the week is right there. Columbia City at Norwell. We also got Lures and Snyder. Adam Central at Woodland, East Side at Angola in a battle of the NECC champs. And Tippy Valley at Southwood. Well, that is going to do it for our Week 8 edition of the Highlight Zone. For Josh, I'm Glenn, and we'll see you next week to wrap up the regular season.